All beds on. Twenty-six black and even. Well, that cleans me. I'm through. Better luck next time, Ken. There won't be any next time. I'll share them. No, thanks. Good night. All next time. Are you sure Brewster's at the end of his rope, Darby? Certain. Hasn't a dime. He's been a playboy all his life. I've talked not only to his banker, but his best friends as well. Would you mind stepping this way, Mr. Brewster? Why, not at all. Come in. Mr. Brewster, Mr. Dudley. How do you do? I must have a check for these, Mr. Brewster. Oh. Well, tomorrow would suit me a great deal. I have reason to doubt that you have the money. Well, I am broke. But I have friends. I'll make a loan. All right. I want 35000 from you by tomorrow night. Yes, sir. But I tell you, I must have 35000 old man. It's a debt of honor. I have. I've tried everybody. You've got to help me. to my friends. All of them. Hi, Ken. Oh, hello, Mimi. Did you uh, come to the funeral? Funeral? What are you talking about? Oh, Mimi, it's a sad story. But Kent Brewster, a man about town, is broke, flat, <sighs> finished. Oh, Kent, it can't be that bad. Oh, can't it? It's worse. Unless I pay Dudley $35,000 tonight, he's going to get nasty. And Houdini couldn't do that with a $20 bill. Listen, how would you like to make $50,000? Quick. Oh, I should like it very much, if you meant it. I do mean it. I'm telling you there's 50 grand waiting for you. You have a little nerve, and you're not too particular. Particular? Who ever heard of Kent Brewster being particular? Wait here a minute. Hmm? These are friends of mine. Mr. Brewster, Mr. Barnes, Mr. Darby. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Barnes, Barnes. Where have I heard that name before? Doubtless you've read it in the newspapers. Something to do with jewelry, perhaps. Jewelry? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, why, you're a very clever thief. I beg your pardon. Well, that's all right. I do sometimes deal in jewelry. Other people's jewelry. Oh, I see. May we sit down? Oh, please do, yes, of course. Mimi? 
Cigarette? Thank you. Mr. Brewster? This is a business proposition. Mm-hmm. You were acquainted with Mrs. Clayton Vanderpool. Oh, yes. I know her very well. Exactly. As it happens, I have found a market for the Vanderpool pearls. Are they for sale? Yes. But Mrs. Vanderpool doesn't know it. Oh. I've long had my eye on those pearls, waiting for the right opportunity and the right man. Well, I must confess it sounds very confusing. Suppose I put my cards on the table. Oh, uh, by all means. The opportunity I've been waiting for has now presented itself. Very good. You are the man. I? Yes. You have a good social background, and you need money. In a deal of this magnitude, it is necessary to use someone of Mrs. Vanderpool's own social position. Well, that's very clever, Mr. Boz. All you have to do is follow instructions. Within three hours, you will be handed $50,000, and no suspicion will be attached to you. What do you say, Brewster? Why, well, when ready, Gridley. Now listen carefully. Tonight, you are invited to a ball given by Mrs. Vanderpool. Yes. Mm. In order of some niece of hers or something, I don't know, visiting from New York. Say, how did you know? I know all about it. The niece is also very rich. For the want of something better to do, she is sailing tomorrow for Central America. Yeah, you're right so far. Your job is to attend this ball. At the opportune moment, you will exchange the famous Vanderpool pearls for these. But these are the Vanderpool pearls. A perfect imitation. Excuse me. You refuse? Yes, sir. You fool. Can't you must. You've got to do it. I told him that you would. You don't know what you're saying. They'll kill you. Make up your mind, Brewster. All right. I'll do it. You haven't much time. on fire away out on the ocean, you're looking at a terrible thing. I never want to see a sight like it as long as I live. I was... Oh, that Kent Brewster, dancing with Carol. I didn't know in you. This is a silly business, isn't it? You think so? What as silly as that Bixby girl. <laughs> Imagine a nice girl like that. There's nothing better to do than go traipsing around some silly old ocean with a lot of roughneck sailors looking for buried treasure. <laughs> I have imagined it. Oh, have you? Yes. Perhaps Miss Bixby is fed up with all this silly business, as you call it. Tea, cocktail parties, and all the rest of it. Yes, she is. Perhaps she's looking for some good, clean fun. 
adventure. Adventure? Oh. If she meant anything to me, I'd turn over my knee and spank the adventure out of her. Really? From what I've heard of you, Mr. Brewster, you're hardly the person to undertake the regeneration of anyone's morals. Oh, no. Tip, uh, tip, I can't oh, think of a Oh, Kip, dear. I see you and Carol know each other. Hmm? Oh, yes. Very well, indeed. To the point where Mr. Brewster thinks I need thank you. Oh, <laughs> I quite agree with you, Kent. I have told her that this is the most... We're going adventuring, aren't we, Mr. McMurtry? Oh, that's right. If we don't find any treasure, who cares? <laughs> yeah, but we will find it. I was third officer aboard the Lark when she burned and sank with 300,000 in bullion in a hole. I know all that, you old darling. Yes, that was 20 years ago. But I know the exact location, and we have the salvage rights. I'm still of the opinion that it is foolish and perhaps dangerous for Carol to undertake such a trip. What the fool she got? Sick of the boat, sank or something. Why? Well, <laughs> we think too much of Miss Carol to take her into any danger. Uh oh What? Uh, I said, uh, oh, oh. What do you mean, oh, oh? Oh, just, uh, oh, oh. May I? Of course. Then you don't agree with Mr. Brewster about my taking the trip? Oh. Hardly. Stay a little fast, because we'll be back again. Yes, sir. Another set, if you please. Does I make it potent as just sort of a teaser? Potent. You'll love it, Miss Carol. There are nights down the South Seas when the stars seem so close that you can reach up and touch them. Why, you're possibly romantic. I never felt that way before. Really? Yes, sir. Potent she is. Thank you. <coughs> The treasure hunt. I sure hope we get back, say. Are you going? Yes, sir. Who? Mm. I'm the cook on Miss Vanderpool's yacht. And she's done let me uh. out to Miss Carol for a treasure trip. Well, thank you, that. <coughs> Want to go, trick? Yes, sir. Me not at all. Focus. Captain Kidd. I felt better. I doubt it. You would. Good night. Very nice. Hello, Kitty. I've been looking everywhere for you. May I have the stand? Oh, I've saved it for you, Ken. Come Adam, on. <laughs> <laughs> Terribly warm in here, don't you think? Shall we uh, step out in the balcony for a moment? Why, yes, dear, yes, if you'd like to. I'd love to. I don't believe I remember you from any other party before. You is a new friend, ain't you? Listen, a big mouth got a colored boy into a lot of trouble once. Why are you going to love? 
lovely place, Kitty. It's a grand party, too. Oh, I'm so glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> that reminds me, I must be getting back to my guests. Are you coming, dear? Well, if you don't mind, Kitty, I think I'll stay out and smoke a cigarette. Oh, all right. Come in when you get ready. Right on. Here, job. You have an awful nerve trying to cut in. Well, if that's the way you see it, I'll have to... You'll have to what? Have I ever pulled anything like this on you? Now, don't get excited. This is a big deal. And there's going to be a big split. Not for you. Now get out. Mimi, give me a cigarette. the Vanderpool place. Hurry! Step on it. Got a mic, buddy? Oh, yes, I think so. Trouble, buddy. A rock. Say, might have been a sailor. One of the other boys just took a load of them down to the harbor. Where? San Pedro, 24 miles. Take me to the harbor. Yes, sir. Step on. Dad, I thought you was the old kid himself. You dating today? Yes. Where are you going? Search me. Some crazy girl has chartered her for a voyage to the tropics. You, uh, mind if I go aboard and look her over? Can't start her, sir. She's sailing at daybreak. Get away from those boxes. You woman? Ted! Black Ted! Scared! No need of scaring. He's done gone. Besides, cats is bad luck at land. What's they got to do with the ocean? Black cats is black cats at sea. Same kids on land, ain't they? Well, what of it? Bad luck, that's what. Don't mind bad luck, honey. I'll dear. Take your black hands off me, Santa. Remember who I is. You'll like me, Gloria Bell, after you get used to me. That was the yellow gal in Baltimore and... Doggone, she's uppity. Well, where's your mistress? Oh, she's the coming. We all had to stop to say goodbye to our society, Fred. <laughs> Glory Bell! <laughs> I 
Come on, we're going aboard with you. Yeah, we are. Well, we're on the ground, buddy. <laughs> we ought to stay to breakfast anyhow. <laughs> Got anything to drink on that row, Wait a minute. Uh, You're not coming another step. You get right back in that car and go away. Oh, oh no, 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 no. We want to see you all. And I want to be rid of you. Oh, no. Oh, sorry, oh, that's a swell way to go. Well, all right. You can come as far as the gangplank, but no farther. Oh, no, 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 Oh, Carol, Carol, remember me to all the pretty little doubloons. I love to those Spanish pieces of eight. Bye-bye, Bum. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. 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 Well, here I am at last. I'm mighty glad to see you, Miss Carroll. Uh, may I show it to a quarter? Well, yes, yes, of course, Mr. Murtry. Yalla gal in Baltimore. Hmm. I'll show him what real class is. Two. We. Oh, there you are, missus. I've done everything possible for your comfort, Miss Carroll. Hope you like it. Oh, it's lovely. I'm going to sleep for a day and a night. On what? Pleasant dreams, Miss Carroll. Au revoir, mister. Here's your pajamas, missy. Your paper's on the bed and I was going now to get your breakfast tray. Running like a before the hounds. This is beautiful. If the wind holds, we'll be in Honduran waters in another week. I'm in no hurry. I love it. <laughs> Come here. Stowaway aboard, sir. What? A stowaway? Bring him here. Yes, sir. Good morning, everybody. Who are you, sir? And what are you doing aboard this ship? The gentleman is a thief. He attended the ball for the purpose of stealing a necklace from Mrs. Vanderpool. Oh, I was a thief, but I've reformed. He doubtless stowed away to avoid capture by the police. You admit the theft. Where's the stolen property? Well, it was stolen from me. A likely story. I'll give you just five minutes to produce the necklace. But I can't produce it. Honestly, it, it was stolen from me. Can I lock him up, sir? Certainly. Put him in irons. 
Not iron, Captain. Put him to work. That would be a new experience for Mr. Brewster. In the galley. Thank you, sir. I'm a wizard, Crockery. Come on, that's enough out of you. It's a pity, ma'am, him turning thief. No, he appears to be a nice enough young man. How? Oh, lady luck, me low, dance the dynamite, do your duty. How? And I'll read five trays. Two bucks says you're through. Five more says you're all wet. The only thing I ever get through is work. And I ain't been wet since the well went dry. And I read seven. Is you white gentlemen through? No, we ain't through. You sure you all didn't come to help us up all that gold? Nope. No, I'm interested in something else aboard this ship. Do we work? Hey, Diver. What do you think about this treasure business? Well, unless the old man's crazy, it's there, all right. And if it's there, I'll bring it up. I'm the best diver that ever sucked air through a pump. What are you getting for all that? Not enough. Me neither. Morning, Mr. Kent. Good morning, Doorbell. How's your lovely mistress this morning? Oh, she's great. And how's you? I ain't feeling so well. Oh. No, sir. I seem to be sucking with the bald and mare. Uh-oh. Where'd you catch that from, woman? Caught it right here. Where else could I catch bald and mare? Keep away from me. Why don't you behave yourself? That's the first. Mal de mare is French for seasickness. Of course it is. French. Oh. Is you French? Mr. Kemp, how you say love in French? Mm. We gate. Senorita. We gate who? Senorita. We gate senorita. We get senorita. Uh, Glory Bell, since you're suffering with Mel DeMay, don't you think I'd better take in Miss Carroll's tray this morning? Doggone, you sure is a fast worker. <laughs> we, we get senorita. Where are you going with that? Uh, to the owner's cabin, sir. What's the matter with that maid? Mel de Mayer. Miss Carroll eating alone? I don't know, sir. You see, I brought along an extra service in case. In case what? Oh, just in case. Uh, please, sir, the coffee is getting cold. Our lady goes over the ocean. Our lady goes over the sea. Our seeking old buried treasure. 
I wish she was seeking for me. Bring her back, bring back, oh, bring back her treasure to me, to me. Bring her back, bring back, bring back my treasure to me. To Stop that. Oh, yes, ma'am. Your breakfast is ready, ma'am. You're the most impudent, impossible creature I've ever met. I should think you'd be ashamed of yourself. I am. Terribly ashamed. The reason I brought you a breakfast tray this morning is I... I wanted to tell you that... Well, what is it you want to tell me? Uh, well, you see, I, I didn't uh, intend to go in for a career of crime. <laughs> I was forced to take your aunt's necklace. Sugar? Of all the silly excuses. Kent Brewster, popular man about town, unable to resist urge to become thief. Oh, I thought I could come in here and tell you and make you understand. But I can't. Nobody could. Kent Brewster, you're a brute. You might not, Mr. McMurtry. Pardon, You're Ms. quite Hill. mistaken. I asked Mr. Brewster to stay. I'm oh, I know sorry. all about you. You've never done anything in your life but squander the money your father left you. Your whole idea was wine, women, and maybe you even sang. Believe me, Aunt Kitty had the right idea when she invited you to a pirate's ball, even if it did cost her a necklace. You didn't feel like that when you kissed Captain Kidd. I didn't kiss you. You did. I didn't. Well, it felt like it. East a quarter north. East a quarter north, sir. Want me to throw him out, Mr. McMurtry? No. No, I'll take care of him. Oh, then all right, I kissed you. <clears throat> you couldn't help stealing that either, I suppose. Now look here. You've gone far enough. Do you know what it's like to be looking down the muzzle of a gun and realize that all that stands between you and death is a yes or a no? You do not. You're like all the rest of these pampered girls who've never had to face life. I am not. Coffee's terrible. Why, it is not. There's nothing whatever the matter with it. This is probably the first breakfast that you've ever eaten that wasn't served you in bed. And the hardship is so great on that you complain about the coffee. In a hurry, wasn't he? Sure was. Oh, let me tell your fortune, missus. How good is that? Mm-hmm. What is it? I see gold. Bullion. Oh, is that all? Now, let me see some more. I see initials. K. B. Now, whoever could that be? Let me see. I want to ask you something. Yes? I had my fortune told. I promised gold. Lots of it. Said something about you, too. Oh, about me? Gee, are you sure? Well, it said a good-looking young man who didn't amount to much. That's you, isn't it? <sighs> now, look here, Carol. Maybe I'm not a model young man, but you needn't rub it in. I've never had to be. When I get out of this trouble, if I ever do, I'm going to work. And I'll show a lot of people around here whether I amount to anything or not. Rooster, you have no business to ask for the passengers. Go for it. Mr. McMurtry, you're exceeding your authority. I was talking to Mr. Brewster. The captain likes to see in his cabin, sir. Well, maybe the sailor shouldn't come aft. 
You know darn well I'm not a sailor. That's right. You're in the galley, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Thanks to you. Oh, but Ken, I thought you just said you wanted to work. Come in. Oh, Mr. McMurtry, you're a first-class navigator. Kindly confine yourself to the business of navigation. What do you mean, sir? Well, Miss Pixby's aboard this ship as the owner. And I'm perfectly certain that when she wants your company, she'll ask for it. But I... That's all, Mr. McMurtry. Yes, sir. Them dice is tops. Tops the bottom. It's all stay in the lead. No, them lucky dice. <sighs> Next gentleman. Six bits. Shouldn't we have it? Huh? Hey. Check the crew. And you know, of course, that mothers have been warning their daughters against you for years. Well, they needn't have. I've uh, never been very interested in girls, seriously. Until this trip. No. This trip has done me a lot of good. You know, I wouldn't be surprised for what has even made a sensible girl out of you. When I get out, I'm going to come back and find out. Out? What do you mean, out? Well, you know what happens to dishonest people. Oh, yes. Prison. Ah, but I said it first. So, Miss Bixby, I'm not good enough for you, huh? McMurtry, you're drunk. Confine yourself to quarters under arrest. No, I won't do it. 
Mr. Stevens, put him in the brig. Come on, McMurphy. We're back to your stations, men. Well, Ken, at least you have courage. Where's that solid gold watch you say you got? Here it is. Two dollars. Ha! Sell it! Is, is anything else you white gentlemen got you in a gamma for? Well, I... I... got something here. Why, you... Wait a minute, wait a minute now. These ought to be worth about 50 bucks. I'll shoot them against all our stuff you got there. You paid it. Watch them. Roll! I understand the situation thoroughly. However, Mr. McMurtry is an officer of this ship and answerable to no one but me. Officer or not, he was drunk and, and vicious. Well, you should have reported the matter to me. Well, I'm sorry, Step, but there wasn't time. Mm. Well, I'll see that he's disciplined. You can go for it, Brewster. Thank you, sir. Howdy, Mr. Kerr. Take it with, Missy. Glory Bell, where on earth did you get those? That nice color gentleman, Mr. Sassafras, gave them to me. Sassafras? Yes, sir. Seemed like he wanted his dice. From a white gentleman named Mr. Teeter. You take them off at once and give them to me. Mr. Stevens, send Teeter aft at once. Aye, sir. It appears I told the truth. They were stolen from me. That doesn't lessen your guilt. Right. I I hardly expect you to believe me, but I was even on the point of returning these to your dear Aunt Kitty when they were stolen. Teeter. Is that your name? Yes, sir. Teeter Smith. Where did you get those? Well, sir, I, I got them from Darcy and... And he got them from Brown. And Brown, he got them from Spavali. And where did Spavali get them? Well, he, he got them from, from Big Black. And Big Black got them from Dopey. And I, I think Dopey got them from Jessup. Come on, come on, where did he get them? He stole them. From him. Well, I can't put the whole crew in irons. Get forward. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you to believe that I came aboard to recover them. Not just to escape the police. I guess you've proved your point. We're about a hundred miles offshore now. We should be at 12 degrees by three o'clock in the morning. Now you'll sound for a reef running three quarters of a mile north by east. Drop anchor 200 yards east of the northernmost point, and there you'll find the lark in about six fathoms. It'll be daylight about four, sir. Well, all right. Call me then, and we'll send Wheeler down. Aye, sir. I waited 20 years for this. I hope the gold is there for your sake. What did you find? She's there. The lock, all right, with a big hole burned her side. 
Yeah, but what about the chest? I've located them, but I've got to have something to move them with. Give me a bar, and you better have a torch ready. It's no more. Stand by with a torch, guys. Yeah. 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 Didn't I tell you, Miss Carroll? This is worth a lifetime as a sailor. Take, Captain. Well, Wheeler seems to know his business. We should have it all up by sundown. Bring him up. You know, Miss Carroll, I never knew a salvage job to get along so fast. Okay, bring him up. Is that all, Wheeler? I think there were a couple more, sir, but uh, it was getting so dark I couldn't be sure. Well, we can't lay here all night. The weather might change on us. Sorry, sir. No more today. Nonsense. I'll go down myself. Don't go, Captain. Wait until morning. Oh, there's no need to wait, ma'am. I've been down before many a time. I wish you wouldn't. Let him go down. We don't want to leave here tonight. It's only 15 miles to shore. Easy to reach in a small boat. Help me over that chute. Go through the breach in her hull. The length of your line, Captain. You'll find them buried alongside the bulkhead. Oh. I wonder why he doesn't wait until morning. It's awfully dark down there. Certainly is.
Cut his line, buddy. Right. Goners, Captain. Well, you'll never be near him, my boy. Well, we got nearly three hundred thousand dollars in gold aboard. You know, a sailor man don't get many chances in his life. We're going to take the gold and go ashore in Honduras. Are you with us? You know, it's curtains if you're caught. You're going to go to prison anyhow the first port we touch. Listen. We got this thing all fixed. Look here. You know, some of the people on this ship ain't treated you so good. Prosta, for instance. Now's your chance to get even. And if anything goes wrong, maybe we can hang it on him. Great. Here's your gun. I stick it out of your cabin. I guess I missed them. But if you don't drown, the sharks will get them anyway. Go smash the port boat. Who is it? Never mind who it is. Open the door.
Are you coming with me willingly, or... I'll get it, Scott. Got you tied up. You want to the other, Scott? Then go guard for... I certainly got it. Huh. You? Yes, it's just Missy. Glory Bell, what are you doing with that necklace? Well, sir, Mr. Kidd. Miss Calvin, give him some of this morning. You see, Kent, those pearls are paid. And Kitty's real ones haven't been out of the vault for years. You let me all through this? Yes, Kent. Girls used to wait for some man to come along who wanted them. Not anymore. They go out after what they want now. And of course, I had to know what you were really like. I see. And now that you've, uh, well... You're a little slow-witted. But you'll do. Slow-witted? 